Yes, hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Alan Travels TV. Uh, today I got more stuff, and uh, if you've not liked to subscribe my channel, please go uh, like that button, subscribe to get more additions uh, to be about South Africa, uh, no East Africa, Africa in general, but too much uh, of uh, with a bias in Kenya. So today I'm going to address the issue about uh, you've seen passport bros. Uh, where uh, people from uh, mostly uh, Europe or America uh, are considering uh, having uh, wives and um, in, uh, in K uh, no sorry in, uh, from abroad uh, wives who have submissive or so yeah uh, it's a little bit true a little bit 50 50 percent true 50 percent not true uh, because uh, surely um, uh, they are not so much different and uh, nowadays we have internet and technology every place so you might get what you want you might get or not get what you want but uh, all in all uh, I'm a travel and tourism consultant so uh, not so much into that but uh, sure come this way we believe that we still have some good little bits of uh, um, good women so to say um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the travel, if you now decided to go and do these things because people are going to Asia, people are going to Africa, people are going to other continents trying to see yeah, yeah, if uh, they can be lucky at it, but uh, major in it, you still have to travel. So uh, when you mention travel, that's where I come in. Um, I'm going to talk about um, people traversing East Africa, or let's say uh, being in Kenya at the moment. And I'll talk about the business also. and. Uh, uh, the trickery about uh, how to go around, how to make sure that it doesn't cost so much. Of course, we don't have the infrastructure like in Europe that you can travel so fast using trains and uh, uh, taxis are everywhere, Uber and everything. The other places we don't have Ubers. So, yeah, the logistics might be a little bit tricky here and there. But um, to put it short, uh, of the East African countries, I think Kenya, and, uh, Kenya is where uh, it's most expensive. And then we'll go with Tanzania and then Uganda. Uh, to a certain extent, Uganda might try to be expensive when you go for exotic things, things like um, uh, gorilla trekking. Uh, that thing cost about eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars per person. So it's not a cheap venture, uh, even in Congo, but in Uganda, it's not a cheap venture because those are the key things they do in their tourism industry. So the things that we find it extremely cheap. Uh, things you'll find uh, in Kenya extremely expensive because uh, a uh, way to go around whether you're resident or non-resident the rates are sometimes set and um, go on to you because other hotels will still uh, hotels in Africa still operate in uh, charging non-resident more than um, uh, uh, re re resident so uh, first things you appear is uh, you have to get your your, your papers right uh, you you're traveling in this country you have to be have the papers of obviously to come here in but uh, mostly you first thing you have to do is to prepare who's going to pick you up to take you around uh, we have uh, uh, first timers who arrive here and uh, it becomes a hell of them uh, when you try and do the balances uh, uh, they, the, 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 the quotation of all the trip after you finish and you find it becomes so expensive if you don't know where you're going if you are not planned on how the itinerary is going to happen so the best thing is uh, if you are new get somebody to take you around and uh, get somebody to recommend you so that they don't take even advantage of you because we can have companies that oh my goodness charge you so much uh, they, they, they charge so much exorbitantly because you don't know how much you don't know the value of money you don't know uh what is uh what the value of uh, products are so you end up paying more than what's supposed to be paid for uh for the sake uh, at the moment that i'm doing this video uh exchange rate is about 125 shillings uh per dollar so 125 kenya shillings exchange for one dollar uh if you have ten thousand dollars to go around uh that is so much i think uh with good uh, uh somebody who has uh uh, good allocation and uh, g good uh, mastery of uh, itineraries that should be more than enough for about uh, three to four persons and if you are extra vigilant and your own budget stay you do budget uh, stay at hotels you can do camping also then that budget is more for more people than six people uh, depending uh, give or take eight to twelve days um, it's a good country to travel Kenya is a good country to travel but uh, uh, if you're not careful people like to rip you off and uh, 
so to say it's a supply and demand uh, scale so if i supply something to you unknowingly of the value uh, mm -hmm. you could uh, claim that uh, there was a robbery or, or a ripoff or anything so first thing is if you are new get somebody to pick you up uh, get into an itinerary plan all the way we have um, about four or five distinct places that people get to visit among them is the Masai Mara, uh, Samburu, uh, you come to Meru, uh, you'll visit the Rift Valley in Nakuru, uh, and then you can visit the forest in the western part of Kenya, uh, you can ultimately go to the coast or visit Savo East. So we have uh, bigger, uh, bigger parks uh, that are more of um, uh, having uh, have the big fives are more interesting in their own ways have their own histories so you'll check my video back on uh, where I was talking about how much it cost for every park how much it cost for maybe a vehicle to go around or so so you can pick your tenery around those uh, properties and uh, facilities to stay in we have uh, properties ranging from uh, high-end mid-range to to low uh, low range so it depends with the kind of services you want if you want to stay to the high ranges it ranges from between uh, i think a thousand dollars or thousand two hundred dollars for two persons in a tent or in a room the mid ranges of uh, going the places about uh, i'll say between five hundred dollars uh, to two hundred and fifty dollars and then uh, we'll come to low range things like uh, camping spaces uh, small hotel motel stays that will charge you close to uh the say two hundred dollars or hundred dollars a night uh, depends with where it is and how frequent people visit them so first things get somebody who get to pick you if you are not uh, accustomed to it but if you're accustomed to you know which places you can get to visit of course uh, kenya is well marked now in google maps you could uh, rent a vehicle with um trustworthy person a disclaimer is be very careful who rents a car to you because uh, sometimes we have had um, crooked um, uh, car hire owners who will um, issue a vehicle in case let's say uh, with the less oil in it or, or, or less uh, service having been done so if you're not careful you wreck somebody's car there's a case that happened uh, so a client get to go away with somebody's vehicle with the uh, oil in it so unfortunately the engine uh, went bad and uh, he had to pay it close to two thousand dollars to try and cover up the charges for the vehicle so there are people who uh, are skewed in any way anyway, they'll try to scam you you'll get to pay services for things you'll get to buy uh, 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 spare parts for them so do do your due diligence uh, show up at the airport get to stay close to hotel that um, was near the airport a day or two uh, organize uh, for your transport uh, check it properly uh, yeah, do your due diligence then uh, agree on the mileage that you're going to cover per day because that's how we match how, how this charge again is that um, the vehicle are paid for let's say 90 to 100 dollars a day but if you make more than uh, 500 miles on it, then uh, some of southern charges will be put on it. So the owner will de will get to calculate when uh, you come back, how much uh, mileage you did uh, per day over, so that uh, you know how much they're supposed to cover again. So that's what now comes in in terms of itinerary to know how much you're going to cover in terms of distance how much you're going to stay in the parks and what kind of the nature of your job if you are in work um, oriented you're doing a research you're doing a, a, a documentaries on something then uh, it will rather maybe take longer trying to be in a park trying to go around people trying to create, create uh, uh, to take information create content on, 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 on sites on parks on uh, on hotels and everything so you might uh, do a, a little bit surcharge of um, of uh, charges that you you are intending to do for the vehicle. Otherwise, um, when you're set with your vehicle, somebody has picked you up. You go to your first destinations. Uh, on your way to there, uh, if you're interested in sites on the way, uh, I think a good guide will tell you exactly. We can afford to stop for this much. We can afford to. Uh, to pick some things here these are the interesting things in the park and then uh, sometimes when you say for example our uh, case and study is a Meru National Park when coming from Nairobi it's about six or seven hours um, 
to reach where we are on lunch time you have to leave at 6 30 in the morning have a little break somewhere in a town called Mwea. stop a little bit quick 30 minutes not so much and then you leave because uh, uh, if you stall more than that uh, i think it'll be an issue you're arriving on time for lunch arriving time for lunch for a, for a facility either uh, in equator near next to the meru national park or those ones in uh, inside the park have lunch and then about three o'clock when the sun is going down because this place is really hot around the year um go in and um uh, do a game drive and then the next day you can plan your or your itinerary as possible um from there there are places where you like to stretch along uh, uh, it's better to go up to nanyuki it's about uh, three and a half or so or three hours depends on how how much you know the area and how fast you're covering the ground uh, you could stay in places like uh, lewa or pajeta uh, the other facilities that are of interest around there go to mount kenya uh, it's about three hours so that you don't waste time in these areas you spend a minimum of two nights or so so that uh, you don't have to be tired trying to travel from there you could head towards the rift valley in nakuru i think it'll take about five hours or so to to try and reach there if you're going directly go visit uh, hotels in uh, nakuru uh, get to visit nakuru national park uh, get to visit sites like hell's gate uh, get to see uh, the phenomenon something like um uh this is a uh, menengai crater uh, it's very big a beautiful scenic feature and then from there you could spend another month five or six hours or so we're going to do three days in a uh, western part of the kenya where we have um features like the biggest crying stone uh, usually it's called a crying stone but uh, yeah um from kakamega and then you can head to towards the town uh, still in the rift valley then uh, head towards the 10 the 10 will lead you it's through a windy uh windy road but uh, uh a dry area but uh quite good in terms of um uh, in terms of scenery, in terms of uh, hotels that hide themselves in there, good thing is that uh, Google could sh Google could uh, find their uh, properties out, check their uh, what, uh, check their um, prices and everything, decide whether to stay or can stay to Nakuru. In Nakuru, they have a, a, a series of beautiful, uh, uh, series of beautiful uh, places to stay. Also, uh, um, there's a, a hotel to stay. Uh, there's a series of there's also another hotel of a uh, Chinese uh, restaurant type uh, serves that meals. And in the CBD, there are three or four hotels uh, that are worthy of more than three star hotel to stay in. From there, you will head towards Naivasha. Now you are trying to head towards Nairobi. Naivasha also has properties that have, might interest guests. Uh, uh, in few, uh, guests that of different uh, kinds of different calibers if you have high-end guests still can get some high-end properties and if you have guys who are on budget still can get uh, budget stay uh, facilities then from there you could head back to Nairobi um, now you're taking back your guests I'm assuming this uh, thing can be uh, this uh, uh, itinerary can be fit in uh, minimum stay eight day eight days because you are doing a minimum stay of two nights per property so that your guests can rest your driver can rest and uh, you don't avoid things about uh, burnouts and so on drivers so if you reach nairobi sometimes when you're coming you will introduce uh, your guests to nairobi have a walk uh, there try to purchase some things uh, some artifacts some souvenirs and uh, or you could do that on the last day so they do a walk in the city you have people who like to do that also just check your um, I check the internet for that and mostly you will uh, just do your due diligence uh, when somebody comes let him approach uh, let you introduce them to the hotel uh, to the uh, introduce them to the, ho the hotel personnel and they identify that they know this person or just ask the people in hotel in Nairobi they'll show you there are people who do these walks and uh, for a fee of about twenty dollars they'll show you around and you end your day there relax and if your flights on the next day sometimes most of the flights are on night uh, about 1 2 p.m um, 2 a.m you guest gets to be picked from there for either you could uh, surrender your person who've been taking you around from tour company because it's expensive to keep them and then take an uber get into the airport and uh, leave our beautiful country with the memories uh, otherwise um i did not mention about uh, what averagely usually uh, the vehicles uh, 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 cost and um, a Land Cruiser will cost uh, averagely $250 a, night, a day. A uh, van will cost about $200 to $180 to $200. Uh, 
uh, that is inclusive of uh, the vehicle and the driver himself and the fuel to travel. Uh, this fee is not inclusive to entry packs, so it will only be involved. The driver will pay his own park fees, but uh, you pay your park fees if you're going to visit national parks when you're in Kenya. Other things you're supposed to look by uh, is in um, the other facilities that do not allow cash payments. So be sure to carry all major credit cards, but mostly people like Visa, the lowest uh, acceptable or mostly acceptable cards. But uh, there's also a mobile payment uh, transfer platform called M-Pesa in Kenya. So M-Pesa, what you do, you could arrive here. You're not uh, from here, but purchase a SIM card. Uh, purchase a SIM card using your ID cards and everything. And then uh, preload the phone so that uh, when you're in other places where they don't accept cash or your card uh, for some reason doesn't uh, work with, with their machines, with their POS machines, you could use the M-Pesa payment. It's widely accepted in Kenya, so that kind of payment will take you from very many halls. Uh, it is accepted even from uh, mechanics, it's accepted for people in the streets, so and it's easily exchangeable and it's uh, much more safer when something happens in case of uh, you know you have to cover yourself raids on anything or an accident if you lose your phone but still your information is intact you can go still renew your sim card and still uh, able to access your money so it's quite safe it's really safe so um these are the little things about kenya that uh, you need to know uh, when you need to find um, if you need to find more about kenya what i've not covered because the video could go up so much uh please Comment in the uh, comment section below and I will cover the video. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe for more of this. Don't forget to like and put your comments in the comment section below so that I can get to do more videos. Otherwise, ciao.